period of less than one week, Joe Biden accidentally admitted that we're sending cluster bombs to Ukraine because the United States is running out of ammunition. I don't know how that works, but that's what he said. Then he called up reserve forces to ship them to Europe, proving that we are running out of troops. And that's also a fact. We have very few people signing up to join our military. These actions reveal just what an insanely dangerous situation Biden and the demented warmongers have led us into. Less than three years ago, I'd fully rebuilt the United States military and steered America into such a strong global position that peace was breaking out all over the world. We had peace through strength. 29 months later, the arsenals are empty, the stockpiles are bare, the Treasury is drained, the ranks are being hollowed out, our country has been totally humiliated, and we have a corrupt, compromised President, crooked Joe Biden, who is dragging us into World War III. And that's what's happening on behalf of a nation that paid his family millions and millions of dollars in obvious bribes. All you have to do is take a look at how much China, how much Ukraine have paid the Biden family. It's a total disgrace and a very dangerous one. Under these circumstances, the notion that we would even consider admitting Ukraine into NATO at this time is completely unhinged. Joe Biden can't even walk up a flight of stairs on Air Force One, and he can't put two sentences together. The last thing that this incompetent administration should be doing is risking war with a nuclear-armed Russia or China or other countries. We have somebody that doesn't have a clue representing us. When I'm back in the White House on day one, we are returning to a foreign policy that puts America's interests first. America's chief interest in Eastern Europe is peace and stability. We want people to stop dying. This war should never have happened, but it is long past time to end the senseless death and destruction. The numbers are much worse than you're reading about or hearing about or than they're telling you. Many more people are dying than you have any idea, and certainly many more than they're willing to say. Then, as I work to again rebuild America's military strength and deterrence that Joe Biden so foolishly squandered, we need to take a long, hard look at defense procurement and our defense industrial base, because it's been withered down to nothing. Given all the money we spend on the Pentagon, it's unacceptable that we would ever run out of ammunition or be unable to quickly produce the weapons needed. I will provide record funding for our military, just as I did four great years. If you think about what we were able to do, four great years of rebuilding our military, and we rebuilt it bigger and better and stronger than ever before. And now look at what's happening. We have no ammunition, as told stupidly by our President to the world so that everybody could know it. But I will also insist that we get more for every dollar spent, because we're spending too much money foolishly, and our prices are too high. In addition, I will ask Europe to reimburse us for the cost of rebuilding the stockpiles sent to Ukraine, which they should be doing now. But Joe Biden is too weak and too disrespected to even ask. The fact is that we've spent almost $200 billion in helping Ukraine, and Europe has spent just a tiny fraction of that amount. As Biden's call-up of reserve troops show, we also clearly need to address the embarrassing recruitment situation in the USA. Joe Biden's woke policies and political purges have repulsed many great patriots from serving. They don't want to serve in our military. Frankly, they disrespect our president. That's a big factor. I will restore the proud culture and honor traditions of America's armed forces, and there will be no Marxism allowed, no communism allowed, and we'll get rid of the fascists. Thank you very much.